All right, everybody. Bit of an off-schedule stream here. We're going to be fixing the S bit X from HF. What is it? HF signals. We talked about this a little bit a couple weeks ago. Built this on an off-standard stream. Built the kit. Turned it on and it it didn't go well. We had a bit of a problem. But we got a bit of an update. Some updates for those that bought it. And what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be universal for all of you that uh, potentially have bought this radio. So let's get started. How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh KI6NAZ. So uh, not too long ago, a couple weeks now, right? Got that S bit X in the mail. Really excited to get it out on the air. And it sounds really good. Yeah, that little box that it's in is kind of like an echo chamber uh, for making some good sound. But let, let's dive into this just to catch you guys all up. So this is the s -Bit x It's available at HF Signals. There's a link in the description. I'm unaffiliated with this. This is Ashar Farhan in India. I got the chance to meet him at Four Days in May at Hamvention this year. Really nice guy, or Four Days in May is its own thing. We were all in uh, Ohio together. Really great to meet uh, Ashar. Anyway, so this kit is a $499 fully assembled kit. It includes a Raspberry Pi, which, reminder, if you're interested in getting a Raspberry Pi and you haven't been able to get one, well, consider getting one that has a radio uh, already wrapped around it, which is pretty cool. You could always repurpose the, the Raspberry Pi later if you wanted to. Or the basic kit, which is what I bought. And the basic kit just comes like this. It's just a shell. So we put it together, and, and really there's not much to it. We just slap the Raspberry Pi in there, and I attach the screen got up on the air and started doing the tuning procedure. Uh, that led to a failure where the radio ceased to power on anymore. So I made a groups.io post uh, on the s -Bit x and this is not my post, but this is documenting some of what happened. It turns out that I was not alone in this problem. In fact, uh, Jason Ham Radio 2.0, he got one as well, and his finals popped as well, and it was when he was, uh, I, I think he was transmitting and, and something happened. Anyway, let, let's just say that uh, this is a developer radio kit, so we expect some early bumps in the road on how it's going to function. And that these this final issue is actually something that was identified by Ashar and the folks on the groups.io. And Ashar uh, and HF Signals has actually been sending out components to replace the parts that broke. The finals, the voltage regulator, the whole nine yards. And so that's what we have to do right now is... Um, those parts there on the table, we just have to install them. So we're going to be pulling out one part. I've already pulled off the finals. We're going to pull off the voltage regulator that's in place, and then we're going to install what's there. Uh, so, yeah, this is a known issue. Um, hey, I'm happy to say I, I didn't uh, intentionally blow anything up this time on a kit, so I, I'm happy about that. So let's get started. It should be a pretty easy build, uh, but wanted to get this out of the way because this is kind of like new information for a lot of people for those of you that may have got this kit or have bought the fully assembled it can happen to you regardless so you may be expecting uh a replacement parts package from ashar nhf signals so we're going to go ahead and try and get that sorted out now my son ben is in in the house here in the shack he's not feeling very well today so um he's home from school so if you hear a bit of coughing that's ben all right. So the first thing we need to do is pull the um, pull the voltage regulator, and then we'll show what to do to put the new one on. Okay. Where are we at here? Very good. I've got my iron already heated up. I'm going to show you what I do to do this, but it's it's very straightforward. Let's get some parts out of the way. Oop. Magneted magnet. Watch out, magnet. Okay. So we're going to flip this guy up. This is the part we need to remove. So let's get you in focus. <coughs> okay. You can see that the leads are, are really proud. They're really standing up. They don't, they don't come through the holes at all. And that, that's intentional because this is supposed to go against the back plane. And the back plane is where you get this heat sink. To take this off, it's, it's really quite simple. I do recommend using needle nose pliers for this. Oop. Yeah, bit of a bit of a cattywampus, but it'll be okay. All right, I'm going to move this camera out of the way really fast. So I'm going to apply heat to the back end here, and I'm going to slide around while taking the needle nose pliers and just slowly pulling it out. Make sure my tip's clean. Now 
and that's it. Comes right out. You just go back and forth with the flat edge, almost like you're using a crayon to shade. Same concept. So we'll get rid of that guy for now. Um, I will go in here to clean up the holes since we have the, the openings here. Put my solder sucker right on the other end. Touch the hole. Suck it out. This is going to help with soldering later. So go up against the end here. All right. So that's all the desoldering we have to do. Yes, I did take out these two finals, so you can you can just do that on your own. But same concept. All I had to do was remove the back plane. I removed the top for ease of access, but you don't really have to do that as well. Just keep that in mind. And let's see, what do I want to go to next? I want to lower the temperature on my iron. All right, so I'm taking it from 750 down to 650 just so I don't damage anything. All right, I think the best uh, course of action is to install the regulator first, and then we'll put the finals in. So there is the desolder. We're going to need to use these power leads, and specifically, we're going we're gonna to tap into that power line right there. Let's get you into focus. Let's show you what that fix looks like. It's pretty straightforward. So if we go back to sbitx, actually this is a new page, also link in the description. This is sbitx.net. And the proprietor of this website is doing a pretty good job of, of keeping up to date on notes, recent posts on his journey with uh, working with the sbitx and working on some stuff there. You can see he's got a couple of posts on eliminating periodic noise in the speaker, corrupted sbitx, how to reset the settings, and then updating the switching regulator, which is what we're looking at right now. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, actually, I think we can just click it. Boop. Here we go. So uh, what they swapped out was the traditional regulator, which was uh, this guy. So right there, that tiny boy that I'm going to show you. So traditional component there, they've, they've swapped it out with a um, switching regulator, which is this guy. So we've got three legs on, on both of them. We just need to solder it onto the board at the right points. We need to power it via the red. We need to give it the ground uh, via the black. And then the white goes to the center pin of the traditional regulator. At least that is what I understand. So how does that look? Well, it, it looks like that. That's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Can I... Get a big old picture of this image. Hey, look at that. So that's the that's the job we're going to do here. So it should be pretty straightforward. And thanks, everybody, for watching me on this uh, very non-standard scheduled time early morning on a Friday where a lot of you are at work. So, hey, hashtag Team Replay. If you're watching this on Replay, hashtag Team Replay in the comments. We'd appreciate to know how many of you are watching it after the fact. Appreciate that. And, uh, again, if this helps you out, if you're an SBitX purchaser and you're looking at this going like, what do I do? Uh, honestly, this isn't that difficult. I, I think you're going to be able to do this. Have some confidence in yourself and, and you should be able to make it work. Um, but hey, we're going to we're gonna sally forth with it ourselves. Uh, Jesse, so good question. Uh, Jesse's asking, was the regulator noisy or something? You know, I don't know. I highly recommend you go to the groups.io page and there's many posts on the topic. Basically, um, they mentioned that you know what actually let me take that back let's see so if i if i remember correctly uh ship with okay yeah yeah yeah. there you go all right the very early sbitx developer edition was shipped with a linear regulator that's the traditional lm338 to drop the voltage down to 13.8 power supply of the five volts needed a raspberry pi and other digital modes this often led to heating issues an upgrade kit was shipped to the users these are the instructions to install it properly so largely it's it's probably more to do with uh, with a heating issue than anything and then also the finals were kind of a problem too so hey that's sometimes how it goes all right, so let's pull that image back up. I'm going to be able to, I'm going to need that as I'm, I'm building this out. We've got um, somewhat cut leads, so we'll just take the leads as they are right now. I'll probably uh, strip a bit off, but let's let's go back to the to the bench here. Daddy, what's the lead meter? Uh, In the game. 
I don't know. Oh, it's a, a fash. My my son is playing Plants vs. Zombies for like the first time. I think it's a, a plant that shoots very fast. Yeah, so a couple of these leads are, are a little... They're already pre-shorted, but not a, not a lot of uh, material has been taken off. So we're going to strip off a little bit more. Come on. All right, you know what, shield? You're just going to get melted down. There we go. Okay, that's the black one is the only one that was a problem. All right, so if we if we look at this guy right here, and you can remove this out of the case completely if you want to do that. That's that's totally fine. I don't think we need to um, in my instance, but hey, who knows? F famous last words, right? So we need to tap into this, to the screw here. So we're going to remove that screw. And by tap in, I mean we're going to solder our wire to it, and that's going to supply the ground for the voltage regulator, the switching regulator we're replacing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. thanks, Jesse. I'll get right on that again for you. So it's going to be... Somewhat cattywampused out like this. Ooh, that's... Huh. The white wire is going to be the easiest. That's just going to go in the hole, and we're going to solder it in place. So that's that's pretty much already ready to go. This guy, though, is a bit long. So we're going to kind of bring him in right over the top. Can you see that there, right here? Hopefully. Get some light on that for you. Whoa, hey, hold on now. Okay. Light for me, light for you. Works great. I personally don't like doing these type of solder jobs where, you, where you're soldering a wire on top of a wire because they generally both like to fall off when I apply heat. Um, so what I think I'll do... Yeah, can you hand me that tape? Thank you. I'm going to use a bit of gaffer's tape. Not the right tape for the job. I've got Kapton tape here, but I don't know where it's at. But So I'm just going to take a little strip of it. No, that's definitely not it. Uh, thank you, though, Ben. Is it white? No, it's uh, it's like a cellophane. It's okay. Don't worry about it. The, the thing we want to focus on is to get it nowhere near the other lead. We don't want to short it out. So we're going we're gonna to tape it into place a little bit like this. Come on. Once it's soldered nice and good, we can we can move it around a lot. So that's the most important thing to me right now. Yeah, Ben, go ahead and hold this hot iron for me if you could. I'm kidding. No, we're, I'm not doing that. I'm joking. Just a joke. Okay. Ow! <laughs> I just burnt myself. I haven't done that in a while. Come on. Okay. 
I think that's good. I think we made it. We'll find out, though, shortly. Haha, -ha, I haven't done that in a long time. Look at that. You see that? Gave myself a, a decent little burn there. Okay, so now I can take the tape off. And we can now reuse that slack of the wire without messing with our solder. All right, so the next hardest hole is going to be the um, the black ground, which we just need to lay flat right on the, the project space. So this, we can come over here. Use the wires kind of like a helping hands to hold it into place. Small metal, metal poker to hold it down is actually a really good idea. I have that too, so I should probably enlist that um, that method. I don't think that's enough solder, so we're going to add some more. And then it goes in the middle hole, which is this boy right there. Are we in focus? Are you guys good? I think so. I can probably do a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Look at that. In fact, I've got the metal pokers, but they're inside my office. Okay. Let's reposition our guy a little bit here. This should be enough, but we'll we'll resolder if we need to. Okay, there's that. Okay, we can get rid of our LM338 here, can go. And then we've got two finals here to replace it with as well, and these go in these slots right there. Now um, we're not gonna we're not gonna push all the way through. We're only gonna we're only gonna go just a, a bit through the, the through holes on the on the board here. Just a skosh. Oh, I didn't clean this one out. Hey, thank you, Nathan, for staying a member there. Appreciate you. Okay. Something like that. So they're just kind of loosely there. See that? Little project in the morning. Maybe I'll do that on my off Fridays. This is my, uh, I have a, a 980 uh, work Friday. So maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do our kit builds on a Friday morning so it's nice and relaxed and I'm just drinking coffee so I'll be really shaky. Yeah, it'll be like Friday mornings though so hopefully people will be able to attend. But hey, it doesn't matter. Team replay for the win, right? All right. So let me hang on to some stuff here. Let's solder this guy in place. And remember, the reason why they're 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 barely poking through is because they're actually going to be um, we're going to use the extra length of those legs to help push the finals up against the heat sink on the back. This is a passive cooling uh, kit, so oh, let's make him stand up a little straighter. There we go. With that big heat sink on the back, we should be able to get full power output and not need to have um, any kind of fans or active cooling. Okay, so that should be it um, from my understanding.
Should be. Should be. Should be, right? <laughs> Famous last words. All right, let's get uh, a power lead here. Is this a power lead? Are you... Will you work for this roll? I think you will. All right. Yeah, we're going to fire it up here, boys. Now, I, I will um, I will note, you know, everybody reminds you to be very careful with um, with radios that our kits um, or homebrews, anything like that, that you make sure you have an antenna attached. So we'll make sure we do that. Uh, I do want to plug in the speaker just for the heck of it. The back plane is not on though, so uh, we won't be doing any transmitting right now. That's okay. We're going to do that. Um, I do need to install the back. Well, I guess we're going to do the full thing. Never mind. Let's just let's bolt it up because I need the I need the power. Um, so let's do one screw here just so I know that we're not done done because we got to come back and bolt the the heat sink on. But I want to hold this into place at least. And we have a switch here. See that switch? So we're going to take our boy. Come on. There we go. And okay. Switch is there. I'm going to take a antenna. And power lead. Okay. We are off. Okay. Let's plug it in. I remember this sitting on your desk. Yeah? yeah. It's been on my desk for like a week now. As we've been waiting for this replacement part. Okay, here we go. Well, let's not get too excited yet. Hold on. Oh. Uh, no speakers Where is step? There we go. Looks like we got life in this thing. Hold on. Come on now, buddy. Or not. Let me see. What? Oh, come on. How do we make this? There we go. What is this? Uh, solder sucker. Hold on one second. Let's see if we got any life out there. Oh, 20's like dead. 20's pretty dead. 20's way dead. Let's go up though. It's dead, dead, dead. Now there's something. Okay, let's uh, let's get the speaker. So let's turn this off. We'll go. Come on. Log out. 
They're going to shut down. It is a Raspberry Pi, so there is a computing body in here. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so let's see. What do we need to do? Uh, let's do the heat sinks. All right, so we've got the... You're going to have to move that. How does the suck sucker work? Um, it sucks solder. What do you mean? Like how? Like how what? Like it just sucks it into the back? Mm -hmm. It sucks it into the back. Let me grab my phone really quick so we can do this. I want to make sure I don't screw anything up. Uh, no, we got enough space. We should be fine. All right. Oh my god, not on that thing. That thing's a potato. Not really. Uh, yeah, the finals are in, Scott. And it seems to be working. I don't know how sensitive it is, um, and and we may have to do a tune up on it. But for right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the heat sink back on this thing. Um, I've reset it back to zero for the uh, for the the tuning of the finals. We're going to slide the screen off the face here. And I think we can rotate. We can. All right, so just like last time, we're going to rotate this out of the way. So we've got to uh, put the, the heat sink connection here. And to do that, we'll first unplug the damn thing. Watch, I just fried it by touching it with metal. You just fried it? No, I didn't. We would have seen smoke. And I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda push the finals up against the back. Oh, that's not screwed in fully. I just finger pushed them up against the back. Can you see that? It's a tough angle, I appreciate. Need a bit more light. Am I able to put butt plug on this? Call Pop Pop? Yeah. If he was a ham, if he'd get off his butt and get his license, yeah. No, I mean this. No. It's his dad. Yeah, I think it's got my. Um... Yeah, it has contacts. It has contacts, that's it. So we get this metal bar. Yeah, what happens if I press that? Nothing. Like try calling him? No, don't do it. Um, I'm unsure which screws there were for this, though, now. It's been so long. I think. Yeah, I think it's these guys. Okay. No insulators under the tab. Yeah, no. Didn't come with anything like that. In fact, they say that this is supposed to go on really loosely. Which, uh, you know, maybe maybe I'll come back and, and put some thermal paste on it or something. But for right now, uh, no. I'm going to go grab my Okay, go grab your headphones. Nah. This is a bit of a fiddly mess here. Okay. Ooh, supposed to be on there very loosely. No. Oh my god, it's such a mess. It's quite fiddly to make this all work. Um, where's my magnetic driver? No, this is not magnetized either, it looks like. Where's my Linus Tech Tip screwdriver when you need one? Oh, that's right, they haven't shipped it to me yet.
Um, yeah, you gotta turn that way down. Let's do this a different way. Oh, that little copper thing is in the way, but that's Yes, I could have. I could have taken the, the screen off, but who wants to do that? Not me. Okay, we're loosely connected there. Screen can go back on. No, Jesse, I don't know the right answer. And you see, I still got it. <laughs> the problem with the screen is um, it's a ribbon cable. And so uh, generally with ribbon cables, I try not to, to jerk around with them. Uh, once they're in place, I like to leave them unless there's really a reason to disconnect ribbon cables. Maybe that's just from my days of like working on old Game Boys and stuff like that. And maybe just because of age, I try not to mess with those plastic connectors very often because they're so, so fine uh, versus a screw which is a lot more um, reasonable to manhandle in a bit. And there we go. Let's connect our SD car. I won't have any problems. I always have problems with screws. Everybody has problems with screws. I don't necessarily get problems with screws. That's because you haven't messed around with screws very much in your life yet. No, you haven't. What, like five screws? Okay, 15. All right. Throw a couple thousand under there and you'll, uh, you may be singing a different tune. Yeah, that's a cool, um, that's a cool app. I used to use that a lot. No soldering for Ben on this one, though. We'll find another project for Ben where he can do some soldering. Uh, well, I got an extra screw, so that's... <laughs> I must have done something right. Oh, there it is. We found it. I've been asking you to solder for a long time. 
You gotta do that when your mommy's not around, son. They're not around right now. I know it's a joke, but why did that? Okay. Well, whatever. We'll figure it out later. All right. So now, let's. There's a couple. I want to try a couple things. By the way, I'm doing this in part because I want to do the live stream tomorrow on um, deep diving this bad boy. Um. So, a couple of things I need to do is figure out the best way to light it for the live stream. This is just like a half live stream. Yeah. This is just us making this thing work. So we've we've accomplished the first thing. So I think that will somewhat work. Oh. A lot of glare though. So if I tilt it, that's pretty good. <coughs> yeah, still glaring. Yeah, still glaring. Make sure you don't break it. Make sure it doesn't fall. Okay. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fiddly though. <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's chungus. It is a chungus. It is a radio. It's still cool. It is still cool. It is still cool. That is right. Yeah, it's super, super shiny screen. Super duper shiny. Uh, hey, all right. Uh, leave it to. Okay. The what if I bring it in? Never hard <laughs> That's about as good as she's going to get. Okay. So we've got the SPIDX app. It's right there and right there. Oh, I may have to change the different lens. Okay, 25 kilohertz is the largest it can go, which is not very wide. Where is everybody? Oh, now we've got a, a permanent birdie here. That's not good. See this? It's following the frequency. Mm, birdie bird. That little line right there. Oh, the blue thing? Yeah, the blue strike with the yellow. Okay, antenna's good. Okay, let's do a, a quick, so let's go down here. Yeah. All right, 14 to 60. Oh, I mean, 20 meters is really bleak right now. Yeah, hold on. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. No, that's not good. 
Kilo India six November Alpha Zulu. It's not hearing me. Well, yeah, I, I can I can do it up. Uh, let's shut them down. Open it up again. Kilo India six November Alpha Zulu. Picked up. Mike Reverb, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Okay, well, I'm in there. Not killing it at all. Uh, okay, what about into... A little more local. Whoop! Hey, buddy. Hey, now. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Test, 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 test. All right. Oh, great. Uh, an X-Class flare hit around 15. Yeah, I was wondering where the bands all went. All right, let's let's uh, send her up to forty really fast. See if that gets us anything. We're tuning up 40. Audio. Audio. I'm playing underwear. The fact I'm not hearing FT8 noises is concerning to me. All right, we're going to go off. And I'm going to go off. We're going to shut down. Okay, it's off. Give it a second here. Um, Yeah, but at 25... K of width on the SDR, I would expect to see something, and I don't. So let's do a full restart. It's fine. I mean, this is a developer kit, so you know everybody keep keep this in mind that like as a developer kit, we are expecting it to have issues. At least I am. I'm not surprised by it. It did boot up really fast though. I'm I'm pretty impressed by that. This uh this unit shouldn't go. Oh. This unit should all be pre aligned and everything. That's one of the reasons. Well, what just happened? Loose connection? Bad coax? Oh, uh, it's my power meter. Something with my power meter. Okay, let's go back to 20.
Dude, how do you play underworld? What do you mean? Underworld. Somebody said there is a poda on 260. Oh, I'm on 260. Okay, cool. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I was into a dummy load. I wasn't transmitting on that person. It's like the screen isn't moving, though, as I'm moving. The screen, like, it's got this permanent, it's, it scrolls faster when I, when I, this is weird. Okay, let me switch back. What just happened? What's going on here? Okay, so my 7610 is hearing a station on 14291. I don't hear anybody out here. It's also like this isn't moving. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to redo this. I'm going to get rid of this power meter. I think it might be part of my problem. Oh, hello. Hello, Reflection. Hello there. Oh, hello there. Well, hello there. Oh, we're doing soldering, aren't we? Turn that off. Don't want to burn myself again. Okay. I feel like people watching this stream should watch. They probably all have seen Star Wars if they're watching this stream. Probably many times. If you have watched Star Wars, good. <laughs> S bit X number five needs input. What does that mean, Uber Even Geek? Star Wars has never sponsored. Star Wars is never sponsored and never will. I know. All right. Disconnect the antenna here. Let's get this all sorted out, this mess. I 
and this Star Wars sponsored something. It's probably this Disney YouTube channel. That's right. I think that's the only thing they would sponsor. Well, I mean, they they would just make it themselves, right? They're Disney. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. W4ETA. I think I've worked that guy many times. Johnny Five needs input. I got it. <coughs> Johnny Vibe. It gives me vibe. Johnny Vibe? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Let's get her back to where she was at. She's... Oh, we got it. Well, wait. Yes. Woo! Great success. Now, well, now I'm a little bit uh, worrisome about this power meter. This thing has been, I've used this power meter for years, so many times on videos I've used this. And there seems to be something going on with this. So maybe time to retire it. MFJ said they are sending me another uh, power meter. One that I can use for both VHF and UHF. So I'm excited about that. All right, let's take a look at what else is out there. Wait, so I'm I'm changing the frequency but it's not changing. What is going on here? Okay, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> it's 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 not What is happening? I may have to do the uh, Raspberry Pi reset on this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's <a> ja <laughs> Mike. <laughs> Hilarious, Mike. Yeah, so what? <laughs> what is going on here? Oh, don't want to do that. I'm, I'm literally scrolling the R, the, the VFO, and it's just stuck. TX is saying 14291. Yeah, but. What? Split is on. Ah, ha, ha. There we go. Whoo, good catch, guys. Thank you, thank you. I did. I must have clicked that earlier. By the way, the some of these are just single click, but things for like AGC, you can you can scroll up and down, but you can use this the the dial to change it. So good call. It's still not changing. Oh, split's on again. God damn it. All right, we're good. 
<laughs> Whoa, what? Okay, there we go. Split is off. They're the only signal in town, it looks like. Yeah. Somebody's right here. Let's wait for him to come back. <laughs> Will it split? <laughs> Will it work on twenty-seven, twenty-five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll move up. That is so weird. Either he's only connecting with you, or he's connecting with someone else. That's a poda. New Mexico, or maybe it's uh, Route 66. The whole box vibrates under the speaker. You touch it, you touch the sides. You hear it? You feel it? All right, let's uh, go to, oh, 2725, sorry. <laughs> I realized that's CB. <laughs> it might do CB, we can check. I know it'll probably receive it. It's screaming. What does it have a notch? Yeah, it's a it's a coaster and a can opener. I never realized what these were. I was like, what's the point of making it this big? And then I look at the bottom and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, Mary Brown. That's a really good idea. That's a that's a really good idea. I did. I Carly? Yeah. I no. I did not. I'm I'm pretty happy with this thing. Alright, let's let's slide down to hear some FT eight noises, see if it, it, it'll pick it up. I got all the screws in the box. Come on. Oh, there it is. Beautiful FT8 noises. Mode FT8. Now, the, the timing could be totally off, but we'll see. I'm guessing the time is off. What is this, 23? Oh, yeah, it's way off. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be way off. Considering that it thinks it's... <laughs> considering what it thinks the date is, I think we're, we're, we're all put back together wrong. So, all right, don't do that. All right. Well, I think that's going to that's going to be about it. I think we did it. Okay. So, uh there's the little appetizer, the app appetizer uh for the live stream tomorrow where we're going to deep dive this. We're going to go through 
the operating menu, see the modes of operation, see if we can make some contacts with it. Um, it does advertise up to 40 watts output for a $400. Mm, let's actually go back to the website. I don't want to. I don't want to speak out of turn. The basic kit is $299, and the assembled kit. Now remember, the assembled kit comes with the Raspberry Pi and comes with a microphone. I'm using the Elecraft mic on this to to function appropriately. Um, so $14,275, maybe. I'll, well, you know what? We'll we'll worry about that tomorrow. I'm gonna wrap I'm this up. My brain We've been going for an hour. Yeah, so if you're interested in this, the link is in the description. I will uh, likely be live streaming on this tomorrow where we'll do a deep dive. We'll try and make some contacts on single sideband on the step IR, of course. I'll likely need it. And, and do some FT8 and digital modes along with it. And like I said, we'll go through the operation manual. It's split on. Split is off. <laughs> split is officially off. I remember he recommends using that. Oh, I rec yeah, Ben's saying I re <laughs> Ben's helping me out now. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right. Um, any questions you have, save it for tomorrow, and we'll we'll take your questions live. So, yeah, check me out at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, tomorrow, and we'll have some fun with the S-Bit-X, this guy, which I got to say, uh, pretty cool when you consider um, what it's capable of. Interestingly enough... Uh, this may become like a, a recommended radio for someone that's a little bit more on the, the the tinkering side of the house that wants maybe something with a much better screen than a, than a G90 and doesn't want to um, do anything special with it. Yeah, Tom, exactly. Tom, uh, so the Pi Clock, all that stuff. It's still a Raspberry Pi, so it has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Ethernet jack, but because it's in a box that is a big Faraday cage, I don't know that it'll actually sync to my Wi-Fi. I do have an Ethernet cable somewhere around here that, that runs all the way back into the network um, in my office. So I'll likely end up doing that. Uh, but that's all stuff I get to work on right now, and then you will see the, the finished result of it tomorrow when we go live. So again, bring your questions and be ready to hopefully make some contacts. It's a pretty big screen. Yeah, I'm uh, Jeremy. I'm I'm pretty excited for it myself. I think it sounds great. Uh, Eric, yeah. So the the don't forget to bias those finals. Yeah, I it, okay. There there's a whole nother thing, and we talked about it. By the way, if you'd like to see what got to this point, go back and look at my kit build on that. If you were getting one of these, it's a bare bones kit that you need to put the screen in and the Raspberry Pi yourself. Um, I'm told by Ashar that the tuning was all done from the factory but uh, mine had all the pots at zero so i'm not sure that i don't have to do the tuning what i will do after this likely um, is i'll test my power output and see what my power output is if i am getting reasonably consistent power output then um i may not i may not mess with it because it, it could be accurate and uh, thank you, Mike, for hopping in. Appreciate you guys watching. And, uh, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Have a great rest of your Friday. I'm going to start cleaning up, literally. I'm going to start. I got a dumpster. I got to throw stuff out. So I will talk to you guys later, 73 until tomorrow. Take it easy. That was fun. Well, thanks for hanging out. Now let's see if this thing will do Wi-Fi.